At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the process of modeling using matrices, follow the process of modeling using matrices, and appreciate the significance of matrices in modeling. In many cases, we deal with a problem that is made interesting by a number of attributes that describe each data point. So using our former example, if you still remember that, it's about our um, sales performance for a given business year. So considering the business year, the attribute or the only attribute that is used to model our sales performance that becomes really very unsuitable. Maybe you would ask me, why is it that using only one attribute would be so unsuitable? Okay, the, the simple reason is that it does not accurately show the performance. Don't forget that. Again, let me repeat that. The reason for using only one attribute is that it does not accurately show the performance. So what shall we do then to accurately describe the performance? Okay, so in this case, the best thing to do is to consider each client or customer. So each client is considered each data point and then we are going to assign attributes for each one like for example for each customer we have age gender then we have profession the average income then we have the marital status then we have the address then we have the items usually bought okay of course if you would like to add more you can no one is stopping you from doing that okay so um, if you would like to use other data that is also very acceptable okay so we are just considering here sales data right so before we continue uh, our discussion please don't forget to click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell to receive updates about our machine learning deep learning and natural language processing courses okay so to continue now we have here using s1 s2 and to S8, we're going to have this formula. So we have Y is equal to the function of X having the attributes S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, S7, S8. So these S's here represent these attributes okay so for example s1 is age s2 is gender and so on and so forth now we also have the following parameters we have w0 w to w9 okay so these denote each attribute of each customer so this would be our possible linear model okay so again this would be our possible linear model for a certain data okay so using our prudence and foresight we could make our analysis to find w0 to w9 so we discussed about w0 these parameters in our previous lesson so the link is given in the description below I suggest you study it for better understanding of this lesson because when you have a, a clearer understanding of how we get W0 to W9 then it would be easier for you to understand why we have this kind of linear model okay so considering that we are done taking the partial derivatives of the loss function we've come up with 10 equations which should be rearranged and substituted into one another so kind of visit our deep learning mathematics course for more up more discussions deeper discussions about derivatives so maybe you would like to ask at this point okay Joseph why do we have 10 equations so as you can see as you could see here we have 10 so 1 10 um, entries or combinations for this 
equation. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So for each one, we're going to use the derivative. I mean, we, we are going to take the derivative of each one. Okay? So this kind of situation consumes a lot of time. And as we add more variables, it becomes more infeasible. So actually, in reality, we deal with a lot of variables, most, most especially if we would like to deal with individual customers for a more personalized experience. So in machine learning applications, having thousands of variables is actually a very common thing. So you have to get used to it. And that's why we have this lesson for you to be able to understand how to deal with thousands and thousands of variables, because that's very common in machine learning. So maybe you would like to ask, what shall we do then to make our tasks more feasible? Okay, that's a very good question actually. So, do we have some alternatives for this? Okay, so our alternative is to use vectors and matrices. So at this point, I really expect you to have at least a basic understanding of the concepts of vectors and matrices because we will be talking about this one about these two concepts as we go along with more lessons in the future so what shall we do then or what shall we do with the vectors and matrices <clears throat> how how are we going to use them so remember that we have all in all nine attributes for each data point okay so remember we have so it is nine because the business here is included. Okay, so just a while ago we said that um, there's only eight, but then uh, we have added here year. So let me write the year here so we would not get lost. Okay, year. Okay, because first and foremost, again, um, in the initial modeling, we just used year. But then we found out that something was wrong with the accuracy when we just consider on the year. So we've added more attributes. That's why we have all of these. So all in all, we have nine attributes. So <clears throat> what are we going to do here is to combine them, these variables, into, into a single variable by stacking them together to form a vector. So what do we mean by stacking by stacking them together. So let's have this example. So we have here X, which means in our case, a certain customer. So we have X year, the year of purchase, for example. Then we have S1 is age, S2 is gender. And then we have S8, which is items usually bought. Okay, so here, we show all the attributes as elements in a vector and write it out or write them out in a tabular fashion by square bracket. Okay, see, this is actually the standard form of making a vector. And uh, we've learned before that it must be bold, okay? So, but the only issue with regard to this kind of presentation is that drawing a vector as a column makes it clumsy, isn't it? So now what we will do is we are going to use the transpose operator to draw it as a row. So we will convert this one, this column into a row. So what we will do is that let's have it transpose using a transpose operator. So now we have this x is equal to year then we have S1 to S8. So as you could see, the first element here actually becomes the first element here too. Here is here, but only that. Now this one is its um, row presentation. Okay. So maybe you would, uh, you would want to ask me, what is the use of this kind of presentation, this transpose? So the transpose operator shows that a vector should be rotated. So in our future lessons, we will be able to understand why we have to show or we, we would like to present that a certain matrix, 
a certain vector can be rotated. So this finds application most especially when we're talking about image recognition. What is this for? Why do we have to study this? Our understanding of the use of vectors and matrices can help us consider or use a number of variables for accuracy of results. After all being said and done, let's try this. How do we use vectors and matrices in modeling? Why do we use matrices and vectors in modeling? Please leave your answers in the comment below so we will have a very rich interactions and exchange of ideas. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.